want to start by asking you to paint a picture of what life in 2053 is going to be like. <laughs> well, you know, I always say that um, the future is not so much about what is possible, but it's about what we want. Because in, in terms of technology and feasibility, most of it is becoming possible. Right? And when we look at 2053, we will be way beyond possibilities then. I think in 2030, we're going to be already uh, at the point to where things that are science fiction are possible, like uploading our brain, you know, thinking to the internet, uh, possibly quantum computing, which would do away with any restriction on computing, really. Uh, a fossil fuel economy would be uh, shifted around by the shift to nuclear fusion. That's not 2030, but maybe 2040. Very, very big changing factors. And I think the real challenge for us will be that we can probably invent pretty much anything. Once we have nuclear fusion, for example, then it's basically energy abundance, right? And water abundance, because we use water to desalinate. And food abundance, because we need energy for the, for the high rises and for the vertical farms, right? Uh, and all comes one to the other. So I think there's basically two possible scenarios for 2050. First, if we have used technology wisely to create a global benefit of all the technology that we already have, and we turn around the fossil fuel economy, which is, in my view, very likely, right? then we can go back and bring it back to the 350 ppms. We can rebalance the world by carbon sequestration, and all of these things, that becomes a g the good future, as I call it, right? And if in the next 10 years we, however, do not make the right decisions and we end up using AI for warfare, uh, we don't make a decisive shift to renewable energy, uh, we don't collaborate, we don't create the global consciousness that is needed, right? We stick with the old-fashioned approach to money and growth. Then 2053 could be dark in the sense of uh, the machines ruling uh, that a very, very depleted planet, roughly four degrees of warming by then. Um, and that could mean living in a bunker, essentially living in a, in a bubble like on Mars, you know, but here, uh, and 500 million climate refugees. So the, both of the scenarios are possible. You know, I, I predict and I, I, what I would I foresee that in the next 10 years, the decisions that we're making will be radically driven by this kind of realization that we have all the tools, we're just doing the wrong thing with it. Uh, and by an economic revolution that is going to question our good old logic. So I always say jokingly, it's like 1968, you know, when I was seven years old, uh, when the whole world in five years, 68 to 73, mostly driven by the US, but also by, uh, by Asia, of course, Vietnam and so on, you know, the whole world became different, right? The music revolution, the sexual revolution, the political revolution, the economic revolution, right? The boom, you know, the, and then the rise of the internet. So basically, 2023 is like this. We're going to have this revolution that will play out for five years, and then the outcome could be a kind of, uh, I wouldn't say utopia, utopia never happens, but I call it protopia, you know, a stepwise approach to the future. <music>